guys, let's get to section 6.2 volumes, this time general volumes. Um, we'll no longer be looking at specifically at solids of revolution. So what is general volumes all about? Um, we'll see a couple of examples. Um, just to remind us, we're going to go back to the general formula for the volume. Um, the integral from a to b of a of x times dx. Remember that a of x is the cross-sectional area of our shape. Um, and dx represents the infinitesimal little width. So an area, a, a very, think of a very thin little volume. So it's got an area to it on the cross section. It's got a tiny, tiny, little, infinitely small little width to it. So that creates an infinitely thin little volume. And the integral adds up all of those volumes from A to B and we get the full shape of our uh, three-dimensional solid. Uh, with that in mind, let's just jump right into it. There's no other theory. There's no other formulas. Um, we're just going to see um, a couple of examples. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. First one, find the volume of the solid whose base is a circle of radius 10 and cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. I'm gonna switch over here. Um, so here's what we're given. Um, finding the volume, the base is a circle of radius 10 cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. All right. So where to begin? Uh, let's draw this out. Let's draw the base. Let's draw those cross sections. Here's what I recommend. The base is a circle. Something like that. Let's draw that on top of an xy plane. Uh, we're going to have to have now, obviously, variables involved here, and the way to do that is to lay an xy plane or xy axis on top of that circle. Best way to do it is to put the origin right at the center of the circle. Then we know the radius is 10. We've got 10, 10, negative 10, negative 10, like so. So if I shade it in, here's the base. I don't even think of that like a region right, inside that circle. Okay. So what's going on with these cross sections? It says cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. So if this is laying flat, then the squares are sticking up off the page. What would one edge of a square look like? Well, we could orient that edge any way we'd like, but I think the easiest thing to do is just draw it here perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is like the edge of a square and we'll take that same length, right? And come up off the page and create a square. I'm also gonna draw this square on the side. Now, what we notice is like, what shape does this make, right? Um, what we notice is Right, depending on where we draw this line, the square gets bigger or smaller. So the biggest square is here across the diameter. That will have a length of 20 all the way across. So we would rise up 20, right, make this big square. As we get toward the edge, the squares start to shrink until we get, you know, really close. We get these tiny, tiny squares along the edge, and then they shrink down to nothing um, at the very edge of the circle there at the negative 10. And, Similarly here, what would that look like in 3D, you might ask, and you might not have to be able to picture it, but, but it's kind of it's kind of fun. It's kind of useful. Um, I did a Google search. Sometimes you can find these things. I searched uh, a circle with cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. And most of the images here are not helpful. But, um, you know, I found this one came up. So I think this is pretty cool. So we've got the, our circle, right? Here is a drawing of a bunch of little squares taken at various points along the circle. 
we can see the squares toward the edge if we're starting down here are smaller but they get bigger 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 and then shrink down if you were to create this shape and you know smooth it all out here's what it would look like so we would have you know these kind of smooth curved edges along the side the smooth curved top to it that makes that sort of v-shape kind of cool i think there are a couple other ones here's another one you know where you can see it sort of pixelated a little bit here's one with several varieties so this first one has a uh, squares this one has cross sections as looks like equilateral triangles semicircles isosceles triangles all with the circular base okay let's see how we can find this volume why do we lie why do we lay the xy plane on top so that we can describe uh, these cross sections and their areas in terms of a variable all right let's think about this what is the equation of the circle so right so the square borders the circle on top and bottom so what is the equation of that circle with the radius 10 well it would be x squared plus y squared equals 100 all right There's the equation of a circle. Now, what are we going to try and do with this? And how are we going to end up with our goal, right? If you remember um, our formula that we're working with, integral from A to B, A of X dx. What we're trying to do is figure out A of X for this scenario. If we can figure out A of X and we know the limits, hey, then, then we got it set up. So how is the equation of the circle and the fact that it creates a square as cross sections going to help us do that? Let's think to ourselves here. We got the square, right? What is the length of the square? The area is going to be, you know, any side length times itself, any side length squared. Well, what's the side length? If we can get that, we got it. Okay, so think of this edge here as being that length that we just drew okay so the x-axis would be going right through the middle could we describe the top half that length right there up to the edge of the circle we can that's y right if we have the point x comma y at the top that length right there is y that would be the same length underneath that would be y as well so if we thought of this you know maybe it's like this part is the y and it kind of gets rotated and it stands there well this would be y as well so the side length is 2y and i know have the equation with y in it if i can solve for y here i can get the side length and we're in good shape what would y equal let's see y squared is 100 minus x squared so that makes y equal to technically it's plus or minus right square root of 100 minus x squared here's the thing we put the plus or minus the positive represents the top half of the circle you know, it's like two different functions. There's the top half is a function, the bottom half is a function. The positive version is the top half. And that's all we need to care about because that's the that length y that we found here on the top half. Okay, awesome. So our side length, the side of our square, is two of those because we double it two square root 100 minus x squared so what is a of x well 
if we square side times side to 100 minus x squared squared, we'll have it. And this is going to work out really nicely. 4 and then the square root and the square cancel. And we got 4 times the quantity 100 minus x squared. Let's think about that. Um, if we were, let's say we're at the center when x equals zero, what would be the area of the square? Well, let's see if x equals zero, then the side length is 20. 20 times 20 is 400. Hey, if I plug in x equals zero, would it really give me 400? Yeah, sure would. Hey, what if I'm on the very edge? Maybe I'm at 10. What should be the area of the square? Well, at that point, it shrinks down to zero. So if x equals 10, would I really get zero when I plug in? Yeah, 100 minus 100. Same thing with negative 10, that would be zero. And same thing with any other value in between. This would give the correct area of the square at any point x. OK, awesome, we're in business. Once you have a of x, well, then it's just a matter of setting it up. Hey, what are the limits of integration? Negative 10 to 10. We're we're thinking of this of this line here as sliding across, taking adding up all of those different volumes. So we can say negative 10 to 10 for 100 minus x squared dx. Just sort of while we're talking about this, would it be possible that this will work? We could go for it from here. Could we also do some symmetry? Could we just go from zero to 10, find just the half of the volume of this half and then double it? Yeah, it's gotta be symmetrical. So if we wanted, we could also do this. And you know that's gonna generate the same answer. Let's go about it this way, a little bit easier plugging in zero. So this will be, let's see, I'm gonna pull the four out to get eight. And let's just go for the antiderivative right here. 100x minus one third x cubed from zero to 10. And then plugging in, I'll just leave the eight outside and we'll have 100 times 10 minus one third times 10 cubed. Plugging in zero is zero in this case. And so our final answer, let me grab my calculator. 100 times 10 minus one third times 10 cubed. That gets multiplied by eight. Inside, I got 2,000 over three. So multiplying that by eight, I got 16,000 over three, you know, pretty large. We don't have the, uh, the units. They didn't tell us is this, you know, cubic inches or cubic miles or whatever else, but uh, that, we're good. We got it, whatever the units are, 16,000 over three. Pretty big. I mean, that's a, you know, a, a radius of 10, whatever the units are, that might be pretty large. And it's going to create some pretty large squares, right? So, um, you know, thinking about the volume of that thing. Okay, so kind of reflecting, what did we do? So in all of these, right, we're using that formula. The idea is figure out what A of X is. What is the area of your cross section at any given location? Oftentimes, you need to introduce an XY plane. If it's not there for you already, you will need to do that. Um, and so we figure out what is the, what's the equation of my base? Because that tells me, you know, in this case, like half of the height I can get from that if I solve for y. Then I see how is this length here? Will that help me figure out the area of my cross section? And yeah, here, I mean, double it and then square to get the area of that square and then uh, go for the integral.
Okay, let's stop here. We'll do another example in a moment.